Hello, hello, and welcome back to Girl We Gotta Talk podcast. Today, I am joined by singer-songwriter Ryan Cam. Thank you so much for coming on today's episode. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so you may know him from more recently, Songland, where he um, performed his song, and it was chosen and recorded by Usher, and then Tyga was featured on the track as well. So congratulations on all of that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sure that's such a cool experience. We'll definitely get into all of that, but I kind of want to rewind back up a little bit to kind of how you got started with your music and what got you interested and and all of that. So when did you start writing your own music? So I had always loved music, like when I was growing up and stuff, and I always really thought of the idea of like, it'd be so cool to be an artist. It'd be so cool to be on stage. It'd be so cool to to do this music thing. Um but I never tried it until about three and a half years ago when I was a sophomore in college. Um, I was really not feeling my major, which was computer science. Um, and so <clears throat> I just got a mic and started writing music. Um, and the first song that I, I made, I just put on SoundCloud and I loved the process of making it and people seemed to like it. So I just continued with that. And so, it felt like it was a long time coming, but it, I've only really been doing it for about three years. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You kind of mentioned you got good feedback. What were people kind of saying about your music? And was that kind of like a, oh, maybe I should keep going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was kind of like a listen to, listen to the universe type of thing. Like yeah. it, I had fun making it and people were like, damn, this sounds like it could be on the radio or this sounds like you already sound like an artist or whatever. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. I don't know what I did right or whatever, but it, it, it felt right and it felt fun writing it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. So you released that song on SoundCloud. And then what did you do from there? I made a few more and then I just put them on SoundCloud. It was nothing, you know, it was just whatever. And then I was like, okay, now I kind of want to somehow give the introduction of Ryan Cam to like, the world as a artist not just like some kid in college doing this so i put a put together like seven songs and then figured out a way to get them on spotify and all that stuff and then i released them and since then i've like you know done as many shows as i can i've released a lot more music i've just like pushed to to show that i'm kind of serious about this that i'm really serious about this um, and I think that the Songland opportunity was a great, a great way to, it was like an intro to the actual industry, like with Usher and Tyga, it was like real names and real people. And it's, it was like, okay, the things that I write actually can go on the radio. Like, like people were telling me three and a half years ago. What is kind of your process in like creating your music? So for that first album, when you started putting stuff out on Spotify, what were you like, what was your vibe? What were you looking for? And then, like, how did you kind of go about that? I feel like it's just all about what you like at that moment. At that time, it was way more rap. It was way more, um, like, organic hip-hop is, I guess, a way that I could describe it. Um, but since then, like, things have evolved and things have changed. And now it's more R&B. Now it's more pop. Now it's, like, more melodic. Um so I think though that as an artist, you just have to focus on your tastes and be really in touch with yourself and what you like and what you don't like so that you can move away from those things and just gravitate towards like what inspires you in that moment. Um, I, I love that it's changed so much too, the music, because I feel like every song is kind of like a journal entry, I guess. And I can like go back to three and a half years ago where I made these like more rap songs that I wouldn't make now, but it brings me back to those times where it's like, damn, okay, I was definitely young. I was like, just trying to figure this out or whatever. It's like a memory thing too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like as you evolve, your music evolves and it, it shows. So um, would you consider yourself like more of a songwriter? Because I mean, you went on Songland and you pitch your song, but would you consider yourself like an artist, like a solo artist or both? Or I think both. I think that you can do both. Um, and be successful at both at the same time. So like somebody that I look up to who really does that well is Party Next Door. He'll like have his own, you know, he'll be making an album 
Um, and then he makes a song that sounds better if Rihanna sings it. So he then pitches it to Rihanna and then she puts it out and it's a hit, you know what I mean? Um, but, but then he also has his own stuff that he thinks like, I want to hold on to this track. I want to hold on to this track. He's just kind of like a creative, um, but also like a CEO at the same time, you know, like he's very, uh, businessman about it. And I think that if you do both of those things at the same time, if you're writing and you're trying to be an artist and that's like, you're just giving yourself more opportunity. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you like so much about performing, especially like performing your own music? It's fun to like control the energy of a group of people, like going on stage and like, for example, I don't know, like drinking a beer on stage, like and everyone like cheers or they start drinking <laughs> beer. It's just like, it's, it's like a really contagious energy and it's so fun to be able to, um, express the feelings that I had when I was alone writing these songs in my room than to share those feelings with with people who like that music it, it's so like it's so fun we want to jump into kind of your songland experience what kind of led you there three years ago I put out my first project that kind of was like establishing me and then um the next year when i was a junior i put out another project uh and then senior year i put one out as well um and i was they're all very different they're all like me just learning kind of they're all um they definitely feel now looking back amateur but it's like things that i needed to go through and things i needed to do to to learn and and help myself um and I really wasn't feeling college, but I finished it anyways, because uh, I was already like in it. And so then I graduated last year and it was funny, right when I graduated, I, I didn't know, you know, I was like, I really don't want to do this college nine to five thing. Let me see how else I can make money. So I signed a, a modeling contract with Wilhelmina in New York and that was my next thing. I was going to continue making music and I was going to go to New York for modeling and for, and you know, to link with people up there, it's a better entertainment area. Um, and then Songlin hit me. They emailed me like right when I graduated, it was like a weird timing thing. Um, and they're like, Hey, we like your music, send some songs that you might want to pitch to other artists. So I sent them like a few songs. Um, and then, that same summer that I graduated, I went to Greece to visit family um, and I made more songs there. I was going to put out another project. And one of the songs I made was Staying Over, which is the one that they ended up selecting. So I got back to America and they were like, hey, send, do you have any songs for Usher? And I was like, Usher, I don't, do I have any songs for Usher? I feel like I don't really write for Usher. But I was like, oh, yo, I just made this, this like really vibey R&B thing in Greece. So I sent that over. And then uh, they liked it. So then um, fast forward a few months, um, but fast forward a few months, I'm living in New York, uh, modeling and making music. And they email me and they're like, hey, we're gonna fly you out next week. I was like, okay, I gotta, I guess <laughs> I gotta do that then, I gotta go. Um, but it was funny because I had just started the lease in New York, February 1st, I think, and I tried to get like some sort of retail job lined up because the modeling stuff is just like kind of come and go whenever there's an opportunity. Um, and before I started my first day, Songland emailed me and they were like, Hey, we got to get you out here like this week. And so I had to tell the retail place. I was like, Hey, I know I haven't worked a day yet, but I'm going to need like the first two weeks off. And then they fired me right there. They fired <laughs> me. Right there. Um, but I mean, Who's going to say no to Songland, right? Yeah, not you. Um, okay, well, that's cool. They reached out to you, and then they flew you out. And so so when you get there, like, kind of walk me through, like, maybe, like, what you're feeling initially and filming it and, like, your nerves and how everything went with that. Yeah. So I got there, and they told me they were going to – or they told me they were going to fly me there, and they didn't tell me who I was going to be pitching to or what my song was selected for. <clears throat> so 
we get there, land. I'm just vibing because like it was a free flight. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling myself. <laughs> and <laughs> and um and then we have like this little meeting with it's our group and um the Florida Georgia line episode. They like we had a little meeting with us too, because we were the ones who filmed it around the same time. And they were like, so you guys are going to be pitching to Usher. And I was like, yo, no way. I, I kind of thought it, but I, I didn't really want to assume anything. Yeah. Um, but that was like, the that was so cool how they said that. And then we spent two weeks out there and just filming the episode and hanging out with the other songwriters and, and just vibing. It was so fun. But um, the first pitch I was trying to like, Cause I was kind of getting, you know, nervous or anxious. I don't know what. Um, and I talked to David Wade. He was like one of the other songwriters on the show. And I was like, bro, are you nervous? Like we're, we're about to sing for Usher. We're about to like, whatever. <laughs> and, and he was like, nah, man, you just got to look at it. Like, like you're dating a girl, like a first date with a girl. And, just, and from when he said that, I was like, okay, that makes things so much more simple. I could just like not get nervous and enjoy enjoy the whole experience. Yeah, exactly. So you said it was two weeks. So what were you, were you just like filming like your introduction and all of that and then like your pitch and then like you take a week to kind of like tweak it and stuff once you're picked, right? Yeah. So it was like a lot. It was like B-roll and interviews and all the stuff they show like before you're about to like perform for the first time that was pretty much the whole first week was just like hanging out and um, no pressure at all. And then once you, um, once you perform, then, you know, the artist selects the three that he wants to stay and the one that he wants to go. And after that, it's kind of just like way faster. Um, you're working on the song, both by yourself in your hotel room and then in the in the studios of whoever you got paired with. Um, and then, but I know the show only shows the one studio session, but I had like, I just went to like three or four and it was like, like eight hour sessions of like, just oh, trying wow. to get it out of it and trying to, yeah. But it was so fun. Cause it was like, I had never really been in rooms like that before. I had never really like worked with anybody professional at all. Yeah. So it was cool to it was cool to realize like I'm I'm kind of onto something in in how I write my music. So now combining like these other people who like make hits, it 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 was like a validating experience. Yeah, for sure. And you got paired with Esther Dean, right? So how was working with her? It was so cool working with Esther. I'm really glad that I got paired with her because um, that's kind of who I wanted just going out there. That's who I thought that I would have best chemistry with. Um, and working with her, her was so sick. Like it felt like I learned so much in such a little amount of time. I was just trying to absorb everything and, and take what she was saying. And now like when I make my own music, I'm like trying to picture her sitting next to me. Like, what would she say? You know what I yeah. mean? And yeah. Just be like, Cause she's, she's very like critical, but at the same time, she knows what she wants. So if, if I suggest something that, um, that is like kind of right or half right or has the concept that she wants, then she'll be like, okay, now I like this concept now say it a little bit differently. And those are, those are like the critiques that are, are easy to overlook when you're just like making music in your room with nobody. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. whatever. Want. But then kind of holding yourself to like a higher standard is I think what like taught me so much about writing music. So you went in and you pitched um, your song Staying Over. So once you were paired up with Esther and you guys kind of workshopped and made some tweaks, um, how did you get to um, what the song is now, California? Um, so basically I took Staying Over and what they kind of saw it as was like the, it was like the demo to a final version. So then what they wanted to do with it, cause it was very personalized to me and to my situation and who I am. Um, and so what they wanted to do was be able to take it and make it more commercial, make it more, um, 
global, I guess is the word. And so that it could be Usher's song, you know what I mean? So I think the essence and the energy and some of the melodies and the whole um, like hook and a lot of things that they kept about it were because those were like the elements from staying over the original version that that really made it authentic. And then it was just from there about, you know, making it more of a global record. So what were some of the like bigger changes that um, you guys made to it? So instead of um, having the relationship be like, I'm overseas and she's out in California and I'm trying to go and see her. It was more of like making it cause you know, Usher, you know, like you have to tell from where, what his perspective would be. It'd be like, she's there, but he's kind of, he's kind of all over and he's on flights and he's, he's moving so he can't really like be back home with her you know what I mean right yeah so it was like a it was like a shift in the the perspective of the story okay yeah um and then so what made you guys change the actual title of it because now it's California yeah because uh because staying over that bar where I said staying over was was like we took that out because it didn't go with the new like vibe okay and then California we say California it was like that was just the vibe you know like out that's kind of where I was out there and it was just said twice in the hook it was just like and did they did you guys like because when you watch the show um they're kind of like brainstorming kind of like right there so was that one of the Mm -hmm. changes like they kind of said that and everyone was like wait that was like good yeah they definitely wanted to like keep that that was like the essence of like that was the vibe you know yeah so you pitch your song to Usher, you get to work with Esther Dean. How has your life kind of changed since the show aired? Mm, I would say that the biggest change is just the legitimacy now. Like, I, it's not just me writing music for fun. It's like, I actually have a cut now. And I actually, people like publishing companies or record companies or like, people on the internet, like people, they're just taking me more seriously. And I actually have um, something that, like I was saying, is legitimizing my name now, um, which I think is really hard to do to kind of get like a foot in the door. So it was like, so amazing that Songland could bring me that opportunity and, and kind of get my foot in the door for me. Lawyers and managers and record labels and, um, and publishing companies like it makes sense for them to talk to me. And it's, it's like more of a mutual thing. It's not like I'm reaching to try and get a deal or I'm reaching to try and talk to these people. It's like, I'm bringing something to the table now. Um, And I feel like as a songwriter, you kind of naturally you work up and you start with, you know, smaller artists. And then if those songs do well, then you move up and up and up, but like just jumping right in and getting my first cut for Usher, you know, that's like amazing. It's so um, priceless because now there's so much opportunity that I can like generate for myself from this, you know? Yeah. So what was like the feedback? I'm sure most of it was positive, but like having your song or yeah, having your song released and having him on the track and then Tyga getting, did you know Tyga was going to be featured on the track or how did that process go? Yeah, I, well, I knew, I didn't know, like, right when Usher picked it, or, or even, like, the months after that, but then, like, a month ago, before the show aired, Esther hit me and was like, yo, you're about to be so happy, and I was like, what's, what's up, and she, and then she sent me, like, a little, um, like, screen, like, a voice recording of the last bar of Usher, and then the first bar of Tiger, and I was like, yo, no way, dude, he got a feature on his Tiger. (laughs) So I was like really hyped um, and it was hard for me to, you know, not say anything, but, um, but it was, it was, I'm, I'm really glad he did though. Cause it like, it turned into a cool little like vibe. It works. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what should we like look for in the future? Like what is next for you? Are you writing? Are you producing? Um, what's going on? What should we look for? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much just, I, I'm pretty much trying to specialize as much as I can and just focus on what I love to do um, and let people who I trust do what they love to do. Meaning I'm not trying to produce. I'm just trying to write good songs and sing them into the mic really well. And 
let people handle the mixing, let people handle the producing, just things that I don't want to like clog up my mind so that I can just focus on like the things that I personally want to do. Um, so with that being said, I have been making like a ton of music. I actually have a single coming out um, in two days from now called The Side. Um, I'm really excited about it because I feel like I'm trying to really focus on strictly my songwriting and really what I learned out there. Yeah, what is like the vibe for, for the single? Um, it's kind of beachy, kind of wavy. Like it's definitely summer vibes, you know? Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's going to be like the first of many. And I'm just trying to like run with the momentum and, and, and run with this opportunity, try and build my name out both as an artist and as a songwriter. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited because I'm a big fan. So um, where can people find you? Um, what do you want to, anything you want to plug? You can say it now. <laughs> Word. Um, yeah, uh, all my socials are Ryan Cam. Um, Instagram, they denied my verification, which I'm blown about. But uh -oh. it's, yeah, right. I was like, come on, man. But it's, um, it's Ryan Cam underscore on Instagram and then Twitter is Ryan underscore Cam underscore. Um, but if you just search my name, um, you'll probably find it. All right. Well, I think we um, have pretty much touched on everything. I thank you again for coming on and congratulations on everything. And um, do you have any like dream artists that you would want to work with next or you just kind of just doing like, your thing? Mm, I love that. I feel like me and Sway Lee, I feel, would have like some some really cool vibes in the studio. Um, yeah. Him and like Post Malone. I feel like just melodic hip hop people. I just like yeah really vibe with you know. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. Um, all right, cool. Well, thank you again for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, be sure to follow Girl We Gotta Talk podcast on Instagram and Facebook and follow Ryan Cam on Instagram as well. Um, all right, cool. Thank you guys so much for listening. Bye. But if it wasn't locked down right now, we'd be turning up like hey, hey. in California. Wanna change the scene? Let me come and join you. Stretched out at the Hotel California.